of the president for the last three years. Therefore, nothing can happen to him this coming year with this new impeachment proceeding. Because after all, we've never done it before. We haven't had the hearings. We haven't had right. Democrats and Pelosi and Schiff and other people draw the eyes of the nation, Republicans and Democrats alike, to these constitutional indignities that the president has done. So look, I mean, I'm not a Republican, you were, um, but uh, I have to have faith that actually our leaders, when they see what happened and listen to the facts, and if the facts are what we've been learning over the last week, I don't think there's another conclusion but impeachment and ultimately removal of this president. Um, we have our eyes on that picture on the left side of the screen because Nancy Pelosi is expected to come out in the next uh, minute and a half and announce the commencement of a formal impeachment process for Donald Trump. Uh, we believe it to be centered on revelations over the past really only week and a half about his conduct, first exposed by a whistleblower uh, around Ukraine, President asking the president of Ukraine to relitigate. Jonathan Lemire is really smart to point out that the Ukrainian government did investigate these allegations of corruption. The Wall Street yeah. Journal had a big paragraph in their story last Friday that they did investigate it. They found no corruption. It's been adjudicated. So this is as with Uranium One, as with all of his other sort of Fox fantasy investigations made up. But he's trying to, it's like the president's been trying to create a fire out of smoke. Rubbing sticks you know, it's, together. It's, the, it's like, you know, the opposite thing of where there's smoke, there's fire. It's like, well, there was some smoke around this, right? And it was investigated. Now the smoke is dissipated, but the president's trying to like get the Ukrainians to gather the smoke up again and somehow create that, create a flame out of that, which is, of course, I believe, according to the laws of physics, is probably yeah. impossible. Um, and, you know, driven by, uh, by ill motives. It is less than a week and a half. The story broke, the first last part Wednesday? of the story broke last Wednesday. Yeah. We are six days into this, and the speed... I guess we knew there was a whistleblower we, complaint we, coming out of the yes. DNI. Yeah. But, I, but I gotta say that, you know, you think about, there are so many things about the Trump era, one of the defining features is this incredible, the, the incredible speed, the yeah. ferocity with which information happens. It is somehow apt that this thing would happen yeah. on this kind of a trajectory that we would end up here after all these months of waiting around when will democrats finally act that the thing that turned out to be the trigger could turn it this quickly it's a great point it was it was last wednesday the washington post broke the story about um the whistleblower complaint being tied yeah. to um if president's conduct as, with ukraine yeah and as we have mentioned i feel like it smacked everyone square in the face and uh, it looks like pelosi there's nancy here, pelosi yeah. she is Tuesday, we observe the anniversary of the adoption of the Constitution on September 17th. Sadly, on that day, the intelligence community inspector general formally notified the Congress that the administration was forbidding him from turning over a whistleblower complaint on Constitution Day. This is a violation of law. Shortly thereafter, press reports began to break of a phone call by the President of the United States calling upon a foreign power to intervene in his election. This is a breach of his constitutional responsibilities. The facts are these. The Intelligence Community Inspector General, who was appointed by President Trump, determined that the complaint is both of urgent concern and credible. And its disclosure, he went on to say, relates to one of the most significant and important of the Director of National Intelligence's responsibility to the American people. On Thursday, the Inspector General testified before the House Intelligence Committee, stating that the acting Director of National Intelligence blocked him from disclosing the whistleblower complaint. This is a violation of law. The law is unequivocal. The DNI staff, uh, it, it says the DNI, DNI, Director of National Intelligence, shall provide Congress the full whistleblower complaint. For more than 25 years, I've served on the Intelligence Committee as a member, as the ranking member, as part of the Gang of Four, even before I was in the leadership. I was there when, uh, when we created the Office of the Director of National Intelligence. That did not exist before 2004. I was there even earlier in the 90s when we wrote the whistleblower laws and continued to write them to improve them to ensure the security of our intelligence and the safety of our whistleblowers. I know what their purpose was, and we proceeded with balance and caution as we wrote the laws. I can say with authority the Trump administration's actions undermine both. 
our national security and our intelligence and our protections of the whistleblowers, more than both. This Thursday, the acting DNI will appear before the House Intelligence Committee. At that time, he must turn over the whistleblower's full complaint to the committee. He will have to choose whether to break the law or honor his responsibility to the Constitution. On the final day of the Constitutional Convention in 1787, when our Constitution was adopted, Americans gathered on the steps of Independence Hall to wait the news of the government our founders had crafted. They asked Benjamin Franklin, what do we have, a republic or a monarchy? Franklin replied, a republic if you can keep it. Our responsibility is to keep it. Our republic endures because of the wisdom of our Constitution, enshrined in three co-equal branches of government, serving as checks and balances on each other. The actions taken to date by the President have seriously violated the Constitution, especially when the President says, Article 2 says I can do whatever I want. For the past several months, we have been investigating in our committees and litigating in the courts so the House can gather all the relevant facts and consider whether to exercise its full Article I powers, including a constitutional power of the utmost gravity, approval of articles of impeachment. And this week, the President has admitted to asking the President of Ukraine to take actions which would benefit him politically. The, action of the, the actions of the Trump presidency revealed the dishonorable fact of the president's betrayal of his oath of office, betrayal of our national security, and betrayal of the integrity of our elections. Therefore, today, I'm announcing the House of Representatives moving forward with an official impeachment inquiry. I'm directing our six committees to proceed with their investigations under that umbrella of impeachment inquiry. The president must be held accountable. No one is above the law. Getting back to our founders, in the darkest days of the American Revolution, Thomas Paine wrote, the times have found us. The times found them to fight for and establish our democracy. The times have found us today, not to place ourselves in the same category of greatness as our founders, but to place us in the urgency of protecting and defending our Constitution from all enemies, foreign and domestic. In the words of Ben Franklin, to keep our republic. I thank our chairman, Chairman, chairman Nadler, Chairman Schiff, of, Chairman Nadler of Judiciary, Chairman Schiff of Intelligence, Chairman Engel of Foreign Affairs, Chairman Cummings uh, of, of uh, Oversight, and Chairman Cummings I've been in touch with constantly. He's a master of of so much, but including uh, inspectors general and and uh, whistleblowers, uh, Congresswoman Richie Neal of the of the uh, Ways and Means Committee, Congresswoman Maxine Waters of the Foreign uh, Financial Services Committee, uh, and I commend all of our our members, our colleagues, for their thoughtful, thoughtful approach to all of this, for their careful statements.